Hi everyone and thanks for joining me today at Watercolors with Jaylene. So now that the fall season has arrived, I thought maybe we should start taking a peek at some options and designs for the season. And uh, I have a couple of greeting cards here that I will be going through the process of how I created these and I invite you to join me on my little journey. Okay, so uh, real quick, let me go over the materials list. I do have my greeting cards, which those measure five and a half by four inches and I just buy the card stock at the local craft store. They do come with matching envelopes. Uh, my solid background color paper, I cut that um, and the size of that is four and a half by three and a half. And then the watercolor paper, those are all three and three quarters by two and three quarters. And to get the ripped edges on the watercolor paper, I do buy like a big poster board and it's an arches uh, or arch, I'm not sure how that's pronounced, uh, 140 cold press. And then I just fold it in half and tear it, and then I fold it in half and tear it, and I keep folding and tearing until I get down to these small little uh, chunks. So, uh, so I have that, and then of course I do have my Kiritake paints, and I always have my uh, little color chart that I created for them. It just helps me tremendously with my color decisions. And then I have my stackable mixing trays. They were a great gift from my sister-in-law. I love them, use them all the time. I've got my clean water. Uh, I have a couple of brushes here. It's a number eight round and a number eight round. Two different, two different looks to it for sure. And, uh, and then I am using a calligraphy pen and it's a two uh, point or uh, 2.0 um, flatness to it or millimeters I'm not sure how that's measured and then my um, micron 05 nib permanent marker and I believe this is permanent also I used it on these leaves because I like the way that it has the thicker and thinner lines depending on how you're drawing and holding it and uh, so I when I was doing this one originally, I did use the marker first and then painted on top of it and it didn't run. So I am going to say that it's a permanent marker. I guess I wasn't really sure or even thinking about it when I drew it. Okay, so I'm gonna set these aside. And what we are going to do is, well, first of all, I'm gonna set down this paper just because this is gonna get a little messy. So to do the background on the um, watercolor paper, just to you know get some of the fall colors going on here, I'm going to grab that and let me take the lid off one of those. So I'm going to take my wider or larger of the O2 of the number eight rounds, and the colors that I will be using are going to be um, burnt sienna and some yellow ochre and also olive green. And this is just going to be to create the background. So to begin with, I just want to get some water on my brush and go through and wet the whole uh, piece of paper, okay? And there's a lot of different ways you can do this. It, each way uh, does create a different look and this is just one of my favorites. So I have gone through and painted that with just water. And now I'm going to make sure that I have a lot of water on my brush. And I am for, first gonna grab some of the yellow ochre. And I wanna get a lot of it on my brush along with a lot of water. And so I'm going to be just doing the splatter effect. And uh, getting some of this on there. And the reason I like to put the water down first is just it's a little bit different of an effect. So I have my yellow on there and now I'm going to grab some of my uh, burnt sienna, which is a brown. You can use any colors you want. These are just the ones that I chose. And let's do some splatter with the burnt sienna on here. You know, just choose some nice fall colors. Okay, and then as you're doing this, just keep in mind that as this dries, these colors are going to blend out. 
the whoops the ones that are in the wet part and then the ones that the little splatters there on the dry part they're going to stay as splatters and that's kind of why i like doing it this way because it gives you a couple different um uh, looks to it okay so now i want to grab some of my olive green and there again you can use any color green you want there's some beautiful greens out there if you want to mix your own go for it have fun with it that's what this is all about is just having fun and creating some really cool stuff okay so you can see i'm really loading up my splatter on this and i don't think you can ever have too much all right and so i'm going to clean that off and uh, i'm going to go back and grab just a little bit more of my yellow i want some more yellow when i first splattered that on there it might have been just a little too wet for it okay so that's looking great and now i'm going to go back and add just a little bit more brown um, as i mentioned as you know as this dries it does blend out a little bit and also keep in mind which i've mentioned many times before and, and you probably already know but as watercolors dry they do have a tendency to get lighter so don't be afraid of being too dark one of the other things that I have is my trusty paper towel, which I don't think I mentioned that earlier. So what I'm going to do is just kind of go around the edges and soak up a little bit of the water and just kind of soften those edges. But I do want to leave the splatter, you know, intact on the dry areas. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to set this aside. I have pre um, pre-done a couple of these already but this is basically the look that you want set it aside you do want it to be totally dry not damp but totally dry uh, once you start painting on top of it painting and drawing on top of it and uh, you can see I did put down a just a piece of paper so that I kept my background or my, my uh, blotting paper on my back kind of clean and neat. So I've done a couple of these before and now with these two I did not add as much of the splatter as you can see. This I on the one that I just did there is a lot more there. I kind of like that. I think it's going to turn out really nice but like I said for the sake of this video I have pre-done these. I think I'll put this one up here for now and so we're going to I think what we'll do is uh, start with the oak leaf and once again for the leaves choose any leaves that you really like or that are in your area uh, and just have fun with it. it doesn't have to be the exact ones I'm doing and um, so once again I'm using this two millimeter calligraphy pen and I'm just doing I, I think this is called an oak leaf and I'm just kind of drawing it And letting it create its own thicknesses you know throughout all right so there's that one and I'm gonna let that set for just a minute so that the um, the ink can dry good and then for this one I'm just doing a stem I want the stem to be kind of fine and then I'm going to draw in some some nice leaves just a nice stem of leaves just three on each side and I do start larger and go smaller as I go down as you can see they don't have to be perfect in fact we prefer that they are not because nothing out in nature is perfect so now that I have the base of that drawn, I do want to go back with my 05 nib micron. It's a finer liner. And so with this is where I'll draw the um, veins to the leaves themselves. Just to give it a little bit more of a texture or contrast. I think it's kind of fun. It's always fun, you know, doing the, the line thickness as contrast and then also as I mentioned you know the calligraphy pen has a different um, texture and, and look to it so I'm just kind of drawing this in real quick and you can see how quick and easy they these are 
uh, with the holiday season, you know, the, the fall and the holiday seasons fast approaching, I do have my people that are now starting to contact me ordering their Christmas cards and also fall cards. Uh, I've shown this design to a couple of my clients and they absolutely love them and so that's why I thought I would do a video on it. So let me grab, this is, this number eight round is my Princeton. It's a velvet touch long round and it just comes to a really nice fine point and that's why I like to use this one for a lot of uh, finer techniques and, and details. Okay, so now to color these in, it's real quick and simple. And once again, I'm sticking with my three colors, you know, my fall colors. And there again, I, actually on this one, I take that back. I, I might add a little bit of a red because there is a beautiful red shade out in, um, you know, out in the nature. So I'm going to put just a little bit of that on there. And once again, to paint these leaves, we do want to leave a lot of water on the brush. And my background is very dry. And so uh, I'm just going to very loosely kind of go over this. And I want to get a little bit more color on this one, I think. And we do want to keep quite a bit of water on these. We don't have to stay in the lines real perfect. And uh, let me grab just a little bit more red on this. We can maybe go right up the um, veins of these. And on this one. I'm going to grab some more of the red. And we do want them to be nice and vibrant because that's how they are out in nature, right? And let's add a little bit of the ochre to that. This, I got a little hair on the end of that brush. Okay, so then for this one, you know, we just want to keep these colors nice and thick and let's get a little bit more on that one and then as I mentioned you know as they dry they do have a tendency to lighten up a little bit and this one I'm going to kind of lift off a little bit of that brown all right so let's grab some of this this red that I'm using is actually a rose matter deep and that's the name of the red on my Kiritake paint set. There could be other colors out there, other names, depending on the paints that you're using. And just use the fall colors, so we can have fun with this. You can see how quick and easy this is, and that's why it's really a nice project for uh, greeting cards, because they are just greeting cards and we want them to be kind of quick. You know, we don't want to put a whole lot of time into them. At least not if we're making a lot. So I'm just kind of adding a few extra little stems going up through there. And so this one here, let's kind of color that in a little bit. Okay, so that one is pretty much done and I'll set that aside. Here, let me clean my brush off. I'll set that one aside and let it dry. And now we're going to grab this one. So I think with this one, what I'll do is use a little bit more of the greens in this. Um, maybe this leaf fell off the tree a little prematurely, so it isn't in full vibrant color. But we will add a little color to it as we go. So I'm just kind of grabbing a little bit of my uh, olive green and then also a deep sap green to give it kind of a nice, rich uh, look. Yeah, that really is pretty. And so with this, I'm just going to kind of go down through and take it right down through there. So now I'll grab a little bit of my ochre, my yellow ochre, and I want to start out here and work into the color that I've already put on there. That's when it really blends nice. And let me grab a little bit. Might as well grab some orange, right? Get some beautiful oranges going in this also. Beautiful orange leaf. That's not quite orangey enough for me. 
I'm just trying to figure out which one is going to be, oh, there we go. This is it. So this color that I'm using is my Cadmium Scarlet on this particular paint set. Look at how rich and vibrant that is. So we kind of let them blend together. And then over here, uh, let's kind of, I'm kind of making a muddy color and it's working for for this so let's go down through here you can see how you definitely want um the all of the colors to be wet going down through the leaf so that they do blend together nicely and on this i'm just going to kind of follow the veins and I'm using a green to do this. Okay, so that's pretty cool. I'll tell you what I do want to do. I see that this is just a little too harsh of a, of a um, line here. So I'm gonna grab some of my Cadmium Scarlet and I'll show you how we can always kinda, you know, make this blend a little better. Just kinda work it in like that. Okay, so that's pretty cool, and that's going to dry very nicely. So let me set this one aside, and uh, I'll show you how I put these cards together. It's real quick and easy. Okay, so I am going to, and I'll show you this uh, while I have it here. So this is my background color paper, and I do take just a regular 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, and with my... Um, Fisker paper cutter. I cut them down and then I keep them in this little tray so that when I do go to make cards, I have a lot of my background colors already taken care of and I can just grab one and put my card together. Now I do have double sided tape and here is my greeting card. On the back, I do stamp it and then I sign my name on there. You can do that or if you don't want to, that's fine also. To each his own, right? So I take my uh, background paper and I always like to put just a little border or frame on it and I use the same one just about with everything and so it's kind of a just a little crisscross or X in the corner and I get kind of sloppy with it and then on the two short sides I put in um, here I'll show you I'll go one two three and then the corner and you can see I, I'm not perfectly straight with that and my little X's do get a little sloppy and I think that just adds a lot of character to the, uh, to the look of the frame or border. And then on the long sides I do four. So I go one, two, three, four, and then the corner. Okay, see how quick and easy this is? And it's such a nice look. I do an awful lot of um, orders for greeting cards for the holiday season. Each one is individually hand painted. I don't make prints of any of them. And that's why there are so, each one is different. They're very unique. Um, and I can't tell you how much people absolutely love these. Okay, so I have that done. So what I'll do is take my little print or painting, I just said I don't do prints. <laughs> okay, so I put a couple pieces of the double-sided tape on there, and there again, we just kind of eyeball it for the middle, and so that's on there, and then we flip this over, do a couple pieces of the tape on here. Now, on some cards, I use a foamy double-sided tape that adds uh, some height and texture to it on these. I'm not doing that, but I do on quite a few So then again, I just kind of eyeball it and put it on there and presto that card is now done and look how cute that is So we'll put that one aside and we'll grab the next one. Here's my card uh, My background paper and I'm using the same color for all of these You could mix it up if you wanted to but this orange just really seems to work with the, the look that I want for these particular cards. 
And so I will be um, over the next couple of months working on some holiday cards, you know, and I'll be sharing those with you. And I'll be doing some more like Halloween and fall cards as well because they're a lot of fun and the colors are fun and they're just nice to send out you know a little thinking of you to family or friends we all like getting a piece of mail that's not junk mail right it, and it's nice to open up a card from a friend or relative that just says hello thinking of you and uh, so we need to all take a step back and get back to some of these fun things that a lot of times we get away from in these crazy busy lives that we all have okay so then here's a couple more pieces of the tape and you can see how quick and easy this is and how much fun it is and it really is a lot of fun you know when you start trying out new things and uh, coming up with new looks because none of these there is no two that ever look the same all right so now we will put this together and once it whoops once again we're just doing a quick little eyeball of measuring okay so there we go now we do have these two fall cards real simple this one I think I could have probably done a little bit more of the red and orange over on this side but uh, I really think it's a cool look and see that background how nice that works um, you know so just have fun doing the backgrounds and you can do that with you, you know you could put berries on here or maybe fall uh, little trees with the leaves coming off I like to keep it kind of simple it is a lot of fun this way and um, you know everybody loves them so I know I haven't mentioned it throughout this video uh, but if you have enjoyed this could you please hit the like or the thumbs up if you have not subscribed to my channel, if you could go ahead and do that now, I would really appreciate it. It does help my channel grow, and I appreciate each and every one of my followers. Um, and also, if you want to see future videos or be notified when I have future videos coming out, be sure to hit the little bell and you'll get notified. And then also in the description box below, there is um, links to a lot of my supplies that I use. And... Please leave a comment, let me know what you thought of this video, and I look forward to seeing all of you or seeing all of your comments and uh, watch, having you watch me on my future videos.